you know, when mixing a song and, and um, is what's the most interesting part? What is it that you want to hear? You can have a, a lot of layers and what's the most interesting part, which should be the loudest one and which should have more high frequencies and stuff like that. And that's kind of what we do here with all the layering. So that's kind of one of our main things making records is a lot of layering. And you can hear that and you can actually do um, a, a, a lot of layers, you know. What's that? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also you can, uh, you can trick the mind into thinking that something is there even though it's not. Um, and uh, we, we use that a lot too. You know, you have, you have, obviously you have like frequency, the frequency domain and you have the, the, the time domain that you can work with because of the way our brains work. Um, so, so using really short sounds, they can really pop through a mix because your brain doesn't perceive short sounds as being as loud as a sustained note. So if you take like a, a synth and you hold it down and it's sustained, it will feel louder than a short transient sound. So you can actually use a lot of percussive elements to make, to make things groove. Yeah. Which is why also, so our, our drums are super loud in any mix down. Um, I think we mix with like a, a do you know like the, the K systems, like 14, K14, K20, all that stuff, or no? Basically what it is is you target a specific RMS, like average loudness for your track. So we target... Uh, 14 dB FS, like full scale, for our average loudness. But that means that you have plenty of room to push transients through. So drums, like our kick and snare, will peak at almost like zero. And the rest of the mix is just four, negative 14. Um, which is maybe uncomfortably, embarrassingly loud. <laughs> You're just like, wow, okay. Um, but once you start like compressing it and adding stuff to the master, it'll, it'll balance out and your drums will be punchy. So you can, you, can, like, you can mix up in the reds. You can mix like super low. It doesn't matter. What really matters is the, the, the internal relationship between the sounds, because DOS today, if you're in like 32-bit, you can, I mean, you can like redline your home mix, and at the end of it, you can just like pull the master down, and it's all there, because you have like 1,500 decibels of theoretical headroom, but it just gets messy if you do that, so it makes sense to, to work towards a, a defined standard. Yeah, to keep track of it from the beginning, because if you start, you know, messing your gain staging, uh, um, early on, you'll be pretty fucked uh, because some plugins they handle the gain staging differently. And if you want to change something in one plugin and you keep everything in the reds, it's going to fuck up your mix. So it's better to keep everything straight. So in Ableton, we also use the utility a lot to like, you know, fix things down, just to up. keep things yeah. quiet, quiet, quiet because you can always get your loudness oh, yeah. in the end. So don't mix up in the reds all the time because it's, it's, it's going to be so much easier to, to get the mix done right in the end. Just if you want to, you can try this for yourself too after, afterwards. You can take uh, any sample and you can add like 10 utilities and just like max all of them. You can do 300 dBs of gain into a Pro-Q, make some, some changes to the Pro-Q and then gain it back down. And if you um, test that against a second track, like you, you face flip it, you know, it'll come out clean. It'll be fine. It'll be you, exactly you just like hit a pro key of like 300 dB and it's, it's still fine. Yeah. Because it's all like it shifts yeah. the numbers up and down. You guys have probably heard that, you know, the, the importance when you do mix downs is like game staging is really, really important, blah, blah, blah. And we spend a lot of time, you know, getting there and uh, we have uh, we've been in studios you know with the several people and um, 
And one guy we learned a lot from regarding that. We actually want you to uh, to meet him. Um, I need to try and set up, set this up. I'll do this before we call him. So we uh, we're going to do a, a little FaceTime call, and he's going to give his take on 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 gay, gain staging. And um, oops, there's no more disk space. Your drive is full, Michael. Oops. What would you just call him still? Mm -hmm. Good. All right, let's do it. Is it still recording? No. Nope. Yeah, that's an external. Yeah. It's not. It's not. Re wow. We really are nerds, huh? Power server. Quick face enter. Yeah. Right, let's try and record this again. Go. Um. Here we go. Okay. What's up? What's up, man? Yeah. <laughs> hey, okay. man. How's it going? How you doing? Good. How about Pretty you? Good at it's going well. We're so, just uh, um, we're just talking about what we've been talking to you about when we we're in the studio about all the nerdy stuff, game staging and stuff. And uh, yeah, we wanted to uh, leave the word to you. Thank so you. Just, thank you for joining us. So by the way. say hi to Rob Spire, everyone. All right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, it'll only, it'll only be a sec because it's like nearly 4 a.m. here and I'm fucked. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, I, don't know, I don't know how much they've told you, but um, gain structuring is like basically just like a way of structuring your mix so that each channel's level is optimal for the plugins on the channel, for the groups, and before it hits the master. Um, there's like some there's some plugins like Waves, uh, the DMG ones, uh, especially the anything with like an outboard card like the UAD plugins that will basically sound shit if you try and push them outside of their limits. Um, so yeah, I mean even even though most sort of internal mix buses are, are 32 bit floating point or 64 bit. Um, it it kind of seems like it doesn't matter, but it if you stack sort of if you get sort of twenty copies of random pig noise and, and stack them together, if you if you start at about sort of eighteen minus eighteen uh, decibels, uh, you can stack sort of twenty copies of random noise on top of each other before you, before you start peaking. And that's that's the whole point of gain staging is to just make sure you arrive at a point where you're not clipping the master, where it sounds optimal for the plugin processing, and where it sounds sort of where it hits the groups optimally. And yeah. that's about it. That's about it. Thank you, Rob. No problem. Appreciate it. I think everybody here uh, appreciates it Yo. too. Give Thank you very much. Big hand, Rob. No problem. All right. Thank you. Cool. Take care. Yeah. Bye bye. So, yeah. Okay. Let's take them to not talk. Screen recording. Yeah, Darren. Okay. So yeah, um, we thought we wanted to give you a little surprise because we're not really good at, at, at you know, doing this. This is our first masterclass and um, our first, you know, yeah, <clears throat> trying to teach at some point, and uh, so it's on. always so difficult, you know, to. Uh, to to like uh, to figure out how is this class going to be first we're going to do this then this then that because we tried to do it earlier today and we spent six hours talking back and forth about everything and we we, we it just got nerdy someone should do a master class on doing master, a master classes. classes yeah yeah well, that's what i want to see so uh yeah it's it's um it's so difficult but uh yeah gain staging uh is really really important um so uh, for the mixdowns, uh, at least.